Hey everyone, I'm Joe, content creator at Joe's Cafe. Have you heard of Hatsune Miku? It's not really a secret at this point that I'm really into the singing synthesizer Vocaloid. Singing synthesizer, that's quite a tongue twister right there. It's been one of my favourite pop culture things since I fully discovered it back in 2011. The music, the software, the games, the community. Okay, maybe just a bit of the community, but still. It's hard to believe that this pathetic piece of Yamaha software that sold like garbage first time around would go on to become a glowing symbol of musical creativity and community collaboration. And at this point has spread around so much that to this day, everyone just wants to know what all the fuss is about. Like, who's this blue? Lady, are there actual people singing these songs? Is it just one band? Is the music industry going to die when it's inevitably obliterated in fire by anime holograms? For being a pricey little pile of code, there are so many variables surrounding Vocaloid that you can't really do research without running into a crap ton of misconceptions due to not only being a rather foreign concept to begin with that has so much history, detail, and lingo, but simply because of the fact that Vocaloid is present across so many forms of media, you never feel like you're getting the full story. I've talked to quite a few people who didn't know anything about Vocaloid or were out of the loop after their fate in the early 2000s, and I'm kind of struggling a bit with where exactly to start when I'm asked the what's and the why. So while not an absolute expert, I thought as a well-meaning idiot fan, I'd make a nice little video guide to let you discover your Vocaloid journey more smoothly. Be you someone who's eager to listen to something new, a concerned parent, or an artist that wants to know if it's right for you. Well, that and it means when I blab on to my friends and mutuals about Vocaloid-related stuff, there's a slim chance I'll actually know what the fuck I'm talking about, so there's that too. What computer software has caused such a cultural impact it needs a video on the law? Well, this one. So, you want to get into Vocaloid. <laughs> For your viewing pleasure, I've taken the liberty of splitting this video up into three separate tutorials to make this as painless as possible for beginners of all stages, as well as an outro you can make your way to once you think I've chewed your ear off enough. While I of course recommend watching through all sections, as I will be carrying over information from one section to another, and I want to make sure we're on the same page, I have provided timestamps here and in the description below to refer to whichever section you wish. Our first course being, so, you want to learn about Vocaloid. This is an introductory section where I go over the bare basics of Vocaloid, from what it is as a piece of software, how it works, how it's sold, and generally have you clued in on what the hell is actually going on in the first place from a tech and culture standpoint. Following that is So You Wanna Listen to Vocaloid. This section is a good place if you want to jump straight into the fun part, where I'll simply give a few recommendations of artists and songs you can start with, as well as websites, services, and games that will provide a good introduction to the music side of Vocaloid and broaden your horizons in this community. And the last and lengthiest course we have for today is So You Wanna Use Vocaloid, an advanced course regarding the tech side of Vocaloid and how to buy and use use it. Do keep in mind that I myself am a novice user of this software with minimal knowledge in music theory and composition, so this area isn't going to cover how to be an absolute god at making vocals and dropping the sick beats. Essentially, this course is to give newcomers and non-vocaloid using artists watching this video a push in the right direction of where and how you can get started, to allow you to learn at your own pace without getting overwhelmed and throwing hundreds of dollars at some pre-owned copy of anime Bananarama when your music really doesn't ask for a soprano. Of course, I won't be able to cover absolutely everything throughout these topics because we'd be here all day and you need some brain capacity left over to remember stuff like friends, family, and our ever-dwindling existence, but if you're a fan yourself who has some more nuggets of info you'd like to bestow to the newbies, do feel free to leave something polite in the comments section. I'm trying to help, I promise. And with that, sit down, get your notes ready, because we're gonna get started on talking about musical Google Translate. So, you wanna learn about Vocaloid. If we break things down to bare basic layman's, Vocaloid is a computer program that lets artists, big or small, create digital vocals without the need of an actual person to record their real-life singing voice for their music, but that's far too boring, so let's go into a bit more detail. Vocaloid is the most widespread of many types of software called voice synthesizers, or vocal synths as I like to call them, and made its debut in 2004 by Yamaha Corporation, you know, the dudes who made your motorcycle, only to still go strong today with the latest version, Vocaloid 5, releasing in July 2018. Vocaloid's technology is based around using individual programs sold to the public, referred to as voice banks. Voice banks are essentially large databases that contain recordings of a voice actor, singer, or any other kind of voice provider, singing almost every possible sound or syllable from a respective language. Take for instance this video from Vocaloid's YouTube channel of Enka singer Sachiko Kobayashi trying out the Vocaloid voice bank made using her voice, Sachiko V4. Uh, <laughs> 
For a more in-depth example, let's pretend you're an independent artist and you've purchased a voice bank to sing your songs. This voice bank provides a gentle and airy female singing voice who's capable of singing in English. This was produced by bringing in a voice provider who is female, or in some cases can just make a really convincing feminine voice, and its creators, be they Yamaha themselves or a third-party voice bank developer, have the voice provider record a script of almost every possible syllable and sound in the English language in a set pitch to produce a clear English singing voice in the software. This voice bank is then brought to consumers who can purchase the voice, install it onto their computer, and use it in their own copy of the Vocaloid Editor, a program that can process these voice banks. Using a piano roll interface, the user creates a melody line for their vocals, attaches words or syllables to the notes that the voice bank will understand respected to its supported language, then upon pressing play, the editor will choose the most appropriate recorded samples to the lyrics and sing the melody line back to the user in the voice they have chosen. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer now. I'm half crazy all for the love of you. What makes Vocaloid particularly impressive is, while rather simple in concept, it's also very flexible, and just like any other virtual instrument, through use of tools like vibrato and pitch bends, the user is able to refine the vocals and have the voice bank sing in any way they like for whatever their song demands. And once it's all done, it can be mixed down into a simple audio file for use in any music piece you're working on. It won't be as tall as marriage. I can't afford the carriage, but you look sweet up on the seat of a bicycle built for two. But that isn't the end of it. See, there have been many cases, but not all in Vocaloid's development, of singers rejecting a developer's offer to have voice banks produced of them. Reason being that they don't want any old user around the globe misusing their voice or trying to take their job. <laughs> so another facet of Vocaloid in order to safeguard voice providers as well as give voice banks more marketable appearances is by attaching fictional personalities to the voices to give them a sense of their own identity. The voice bank who I had sing Daisy Bell can be any identity I want as it's my take on the vocalist in my piece from a raptor singing a gentle lullaby to Junpei Yori trying to seduce me or a weird fusion of both. But from a marketing and software standpoint, this soft female vocalist is Avana, an 18 year old girl of Irish descent who's five foot six, 110 pounds, and has samples recorded by Irish singer Rachel Day. And that's how she's presented on the box art of her software. Not soft female voice for Vocaloid, or the voice of Rachel Day, but Avana. And you can head online to YouTube or any other content sharing site and find music using Avana by any other artist who purchased her voice and used it in the editor. What makes using characters important is it's not trying to fool anyone exactly, even if they sometimes get on really eerie levels when a voice bank that's currently in development has a character that suspiciously looks like you and you're wondering if the developers themselves are spying on you. Seriously, I could change my profile picture to artwork of Auschwitz and everyone I know would legitimately think it's fan art of me. Vocaloid wasn't designed to replace singers and make them obsolete, but rather to give unique voices and companions to those who don't choose or have the ability to have a human sing their music. And the use of characters lent such a hand in the software's cultural impact that many of you most likely learned about a character before learning about Vocaloid itself. Let's talk about Krypton Future Media. Back in the Vocaloid 1 days, using characters wasn't much of a thing. The English soul singers for the software's first outing, Leon and Lola, were given rather simplistic box arts as the voices were only really intended as backup singers or tools. And other voice banks for the program would have characters plastered on the front, but only really for there to be something to look at and distinguish them. And an example of how this philosophy changed over time is the Character Vocal series, created by third-party Japanese developers per Krypton Future Media, a group of six Japanese voice banks each given their own names and visual identities, who over time have risen as established pop idols used in other people's works, and have gradually built up as these very real personalities that represent a subset of independent music production in Japan. Meiko, Kaito, Megurine Luka, Kagamine Rin and Len, and the star herself who became so popular that she is now the face of her medium, and many people around the world know about her even if they've never heard of Vocaloid before, Hatsune Miku.
Hatsune Miku is a 16-year-old blue-haired anime girl. Hatsune Miku is a character to stuff into ads. She's a hologram. She's a video game character. All of this comes from the mascot, the visual character stuffed with numerous non-canonical elements by her fans. But in actual fact, Hatsune Miku is a Vocaloid voice bank containing samples from Japanese voice actress Saki Fujita to create a cute-sounding female vocalist. And even right now, you can go online, purchase Hatsune Miku's voice in Japanese, English, or Chinese, and use it in the Vocaloid editor for your own music. I remember when I first saw a live concert with Miku and thought it was a single, all-human band where the singer just didn't like showing her face. It's a common mistake, as a lot of earlier Vocaloid music distributed by fans tended to be credited towards the vocalist and not the musician themselves, which is another discussion entirely. Please credit musicians properly. But in actual fact, Miku and every other voice bank for Vocaloid is a computer program anyone can use with their music, and every song you hear online and from those live performances comes from a multitude of different artists, from the band with a record deal to the hobbyist sitting in their room. The only common factor being that they use the same instrument to make their vocals. This isn't just stemming from one band that has one girl as a lead vocalist, mostly because she isn't even a real person, and as a character can do, say, or act however you wish. And that's pretty much all you need to know, starting out as either a listener or a composer. A computer program that lets musicians create vocals using fictional characters voiced by real people. For additional learning, I recommend, obviously, looking at the official vocal website for more about the software, or Krypton Future Media's Peer Pro series if you'd like to learn more about the character vocal series. Another personal recommendation of mine is Hatsune Miku Explaining the Impact of a Virtual Idol, a video essay made by my good friend Miles with a Y for more about the history of Vocaloid's development and how Hatsune Miku in particular became a symbol of Vocaloid as a media. That and it's just one of my favourite video essays you can find on this cesspit of a site. Links to this and more in the description below. And if you made it this far, that must mean you're still somewhat interested and you're dying to listen to some music, which means we can move on to the next course. Oh, yatta! Umai mo da ne! So. You wanna listen to Vocaloid. This section's hopefully a short one as it's very subjective and mostly just me recommending stuff, but it's likely you'll be a little lost even after explaining everything. I mean, if Vocaloid music is by all kinds of different people in a wide community, where can I find all the good stuff? And the answer is simply, well, everywhere. If you know where to get music, you know where to get Vocaloid music. YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere. It is no different. One of the most active Vocaloid communities is on the Japanese video sharing site Nico Nico, where you just hop on, type in Vocaloid or the name of a character you like the voice of, and immediately be bombarded with results of great original songs and covers posted by the creators themselves, or you can enter the Vocaloid Hall of Fame where the most popular songs lie, all down new. What makes Vocaloid so fascinating, and it's a point I can't stress enough for new listeners, is that it's flexible. While as a program it does have a learning curve and plenty of room for error, even with the same vocalist, artists can have that voice sound totally different depending on how they use it and incorporate it into their music. So if you're currently put off by a voice, or just Vocaloid in general, chances are the right artist for you is still out there. It's why Vocaloid's been used in how techno, opera, pop, classical, jazz, heavy metal, basically anything its community can concoct. It is but one instrument in a fantastic ecosystem of independent music production. It's why a vocalist can sound like this in one song, yet by another user the same vocalist can sound like this. Why they can sound like this? Yet the exact same voice bank can also sound like this. Perhaps you want my recommendations of where you should head first to get a good coverage of what Vocaloid provides, and I'll be happy to help. In this section, I'll be going over a few artists that I feel are great starting points and have some worthwhile songs for you to make as your first listens, as well as a few personal favourites of mine that I threw in for fun. And hopefully they won't all be the really obvious artists that just use Hatsune Miku. I want to try and give you some variety here to widen the scope a bit. Of course, I can't cover everything. This is more a case of where, listening to these guys, you're likely to find more works in the recommended sections of sites. But again, if you find an artist you really like, feel free to comment down below 
below of what you think of their music. I'm dying to hear about what you'll find on your own little journey. Starting off with an easy choice in the composer of most people's first Vocaloid songs, we have Rio. Despite long since retiring from Vocaloid to focus on his professional career, Rio is one of the most well-known producers and one of the earliest instances of achieving major success in the music industry, mostly because his music is just that damn good. Commonly using the famous Blue Songstress, he's believed to be the main factor in Hudson Miku's rise to popularity, and she's most well known for Rio's songs, from World Is Mine to Sekudan and Graffiti. A near perfect introduction to Japanese Vocaloid, with some really solid music and clean, natural tuning in Vocaloid. But, for those a little fatigued with all the Japanese going on in this video and want something a little more western, we have the ace from another space with Circus P. An American Vocaloid producer well known for insanely catchy electronic music with a serious tone using a variety of English voice banks. While potentially an acquired taste depending on the genres you're into, Circus in my opinion acts as a good introduction to the English side of Vocaloid because of the variety of singers he uses and the different ways they're incorporated in tune. So with Circus you get a few different solid flavours for your first listen on the English side of things and plenty of bangers that won't leave your head. I got a few tricks up my sleeve. I've been practicing on you all of me, but me leave this night tonight to feel your own voice. Feel your chest just like how you feel mine. Moving back to the list of obvious Japanese options that really like using Miku, what can I say, the Japanese know what they like, we have KZ, a techno artist mostly known for making upbeat, optimistic music and auto-tuning his vocals to sound more digitized. In fact, by providing a lot of people's first listens, I'm pretty sure KZ accidentally caused a bit of confusion to new listeners, thinking this auto-tune style was just how Vocaloids sounded out of the box by all artists that use them, but I think that's just testament to the resourcefulness of embracing Vocaloid as a computer program. But regardless, KZ has an amazing library of really uplifting music that gives you that boost you need throughout the day, and to me represents the ambitious nature of the community. But perhaps you want some music that's a bit more aggressive and frank, and for that I turn you to no other than Kurage P. A little bit of a bias because Kurage is one of my favourite Japanese Vocaloid artists, he's a guitarist who makes a lot of loud and heavy rock using many different vocalists, some of which are usually associated with being rather gentle singers, which makes his style of tuning and composition all the more refreshing. <laughs> With characters in his songs like a tattletale who thinks she's performing a public service, a stuck-up girl who believes she's superior to others, and a lonely, dying child who befriends a large monster, Karage has works both funny and emotional, and they're perfect to listen to no matter what mood you're in because of how powerful and energetic they can be. Another English producer, for those who want some fantastic tracks that are a bit closer to home, Kira, a German producer who's 17 years old? I refuse to believe that shit! Kira is hands down one of the most impressive English producers, with a library of pop and dance tracks reminiscent of Western pop artists like Rihanna, and has some absolutely amazing tuning to boot, using the American vocalist Ruby and one of my personal favourite English voice banks, Megpoid English. The combination of the two factors makes tracks that are unbelievably catchy, so for something a bit more familiar yet refreshing, Kira's the way to go.
And lastly, Pinocchio P is one of the first artists I started listening to outside of compilation, so I have a fair bit of nostalgia for some of the songs, but they're so damn good, and Pinocchio is, in my opinion, one of the best Japanese artists the Vocaloid community has to offer right now. With a quirky rock and progressive house style, absurd yet intriguing themes, Pinocchio himself providing vocals alongside his Vocaloid, and a signature solid yet cutesy way of tuning the vocals. This is definitely one of my highest priority recommendations for amazing first Vocaloid music, and I want you to do yourself a favour and blast Planet Mashirake on max volume. I'm not even going to preview it, I want you to do that yourself so you can thank me later. <laughs> And all of that is just the tip of the iceberg for what I think are good first listens. But once you're in the swing of things and not suffering from information overload, I definitely recommend this list of honourable mentions, big and small to keep exploring from here. From country to country, the Vocaloid community is filled with tons of absolutely amazing creative people that might appreciate a few more listeners, and not just in Japan and English-speaking countries. If you do find some artists you like, please remember to look out for ways you can support their music officially, be it through their Spotify, iTunes, Bandcamp, Patreon, or what have you. But Joe, you say. This is a gaming channel, ain't it? Like, you usually do video game videos and shit, so that must mean there are Vocaloid video games, right? Well, you couldn't be any more correct. Have I ever told you about Hatsune Miku Project Diva? The rhythm game series consisting of community-made Krypton Vocaloid classics? This series is basically a love letter to any Vocaloid fan, and they're also really good games with a great list of first listens, so you can play whichever entry you like. They're localized on PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. They even made a spin-off for 3DS, so, you know. Reminder that this video is not sponsored in any way, I'm just here to help. So if you're just here to give things a good listen, that's it. That's all you need to know to get started on Vocaloid, and I hope you have a wonderful time exploring the community this program has built up since about 15 goddamn years ago when the first instance of it came out. But perhaps we're not done just yet and you wouldn't mind hearing me nerd out about the nitty gritty of this thing? Well, I mean you're being too nice, but let's see if I can lend you a hand. So. You wanna use Vocaloid. We're about halfway through this video, aren't we? I'm going to die. <laughs> Once again, I'm not exactly a complete expert on vocal sense, and my music knowledge is extremely limited, but that doesn't mean I can't give you a little help. Oh god damn it. Whether you're a hobbyist that wants to throw some covers onto YouTube, an artist that wants to try something new, Vocaloid or any of its relative software might be the thing you need, which of course I highly recommend because it's such a fascinating thing to look at under the microscope. And knowledge of the software, no matter how small, is perfect for appreciating other people's vocal synth works that little bit more. It's kind of like diving into a main course, you'll do a better job at expressing your feelings on the food when you're into the culinary arts. As a novice, not only is Vocaloid really fun and rewarding to use for me, but from the hours upon hours of reading I've done on it, as well as an obsessive degree of window shopping, I feel it also teaches you some great little tidbits about the human voice and other languages it supports. I'm not saying Vocaloid made me bilingual, but in reading up how different voice banks worked, it got me interested in learning about different areas of language, like the hiragana script in Japanese, how Chinese is a tonal language, and how English is one of the most difficult and intensive elements of our speech to synthesize because it's a horrific amalgamation of three or four other languages stacked into a trench coat. Why does refrigerator not have a D in it? But even if you have no interest in the tech side of things, using vocal synth and your music gives you a vocalist that you have some control over that can make you part of a welcoming community that would love to see your work. But first we need to get you prepped for if and when that day comes, which is where this section of the video comes in. The first thing is that, of course, if you're already bursting at the seams with ideas, you're pretty much ready to go. Many people think Vocaloid's all about fumbling around with pitch and finding the right syllables, but it's honestly as advanced as you want it to be. If you sat here staring at me and hearing my voice can make a catchy melody, write some clever lyrics, or just mix audio well, nobody's gonna get mad at you because a lyric sounds a bit off or the voice is a little flat. And even if you don't know how to do any of that, well, that's not a problem either. The community is a platform for creating, so throw that crap at the wall, see if it sticks, and have a nice conversation with your peers so you can learn more from each other. But with pep talks out of the way, let me walk you through a little buyer's guide of mine, starting small and going into immense detail to help even the most absolute of beginners. I'm gonna be explaining this like you're five to make sure it gets burned into the grey matter. Don't take it personally, I'm just here to help. The first thing you'll want to do is decide 
on which voice banks you want to use for your music. There are dozens available as the software is quite the legacy, as well as other vocalists who are only available on other programs unrelated to Vocaloid. Vocaloid is not the only voice synthesizer, but for now, let's look at Vocaloid on its own to streamline things. As I've said before in earlier points of this video, it isn't just Yamaha who developed voice banks for Vocaloid, and there are many third-party developers. This means some voice banks are sold on the official Vocaloid site, but some aren't and can only be bought through the developer or a third-party music site. This also means the count is rather staggering. There are a ton of voice banks, so if you'd like to see a comprehensive list of every voice bank to have ever existed by engine version, your best bet is on the Vocaloid wiki that I'll link down below, but if that's a little too overwhelming, we can narrow your options a tad. A quick side note before beginning is that voice banks, just like the Vocaloid editor itself, work in iterations. The editor, as of writing, is currently at its fifth iteration, Vocaloid 5, which means voice banks can have up to five versions of different stages of compatibility and different functions. Say for example you own Hatsune Miku V3. This means to use this voice bank you need to have the Vocaloid 3 editor or newer, as backwards compatibility on Vocaloid 3 voice banks and newer is an option in Vocaloid 4 and 5. But this also means the voice bank has less functions and isn't as refined compared to its upgrade Hatsune Miku V4X, which not only requires Vocaloid 4 or newer, but has new functionality that takes advantage of the Vocaloid 4 editor in terms of voice quality and expression. So please check carefully to ensure that your editor can run the voice bank you're purchasing and vice versa. You will need to do a bit of research before you just buy everything willy-nilly. When it comes to your first voice bank, it honestly depends on what kind of music you're making as well as your preference, but from personal experience, I'd say you ideally want to go with a versatile vocalist that's really hard to mess up the quality of. Feminine voice banks, or just ones with really high-pitched voices like Kagamine, Rin, and Megpoid are very common in Vocaloid, because the higher pitches sound less distorted when synthesized, compared to the deep masculine voices like Chris and Cyber Songman. But there are dozens of other variables, most notably making sure a voice bank can sing in the genres, languages, and styles you'd like to use in your music. On storefronts and community pages, voice banks have numerous different stats regarding the type of music they're mostly recommended for, as well as their key and tempo ranges for the pitch and speed they can sing in without the sample sounding distorted. But feel free to only use these as rough guidelines, as you're still able to use the voice bank outside of these boundaries to some degree. Ivana's highest recommended key range on Zero G's website is G4. G4. But her samples are still audible in ranges as high as F8 if you need her to sing that high. The sample will just be really distorted and sound more like a whistle, but hey, it's possible. Vocaloid has voice banks that can currently sing in five languages, English, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and Spanish. And whether or not a vocalist can sing in that language varies because it's basically in the fundamentals of their samples. It's important you keep this in mind as the samples and how they're recorded and categorized in the software are optimized around writing lyrics in that respective language, as well as the accent the voice bank sings in. So for instance, Japanese voice banks primarily consist of syllables in the hiragana script, sung with a Japanese accent. And if you type in English lyrics while using a Japanese voice bank, you'll be going nowhere fast. It isn't impossible, however, just a rather advanced way of tuning vocals. Many artists such as Ghost and Pals have produced songs in the past in English using voice banks that have never had English samples before. Songs like Appetite of a People Pleaser use Japanese voice banks like Flower, but through a bit of know-how with the software, Ghost use the Japanese samples to mimic the English language, which I obviously don't recommend for beginners, but is definitely food for thought in future if you want to use a voice bank that doesn't support your language. <laughs> Knowing this, it's also worth keeping in mind that some vocalists are compatible in multiple languages. Some Vocaloids contain multiple voice banks from the same provider. These are called Appends, and give you a wider range of singing styles with one singer using an entirely new set of samples. For instance, Hatsune Miku's latest build, V4X, has the Japanese voice banks Original, Soft, Solid, dark, and sweet, and two other voice banks sold separately, English and Chinese. As Japanese original, English, and Chinese are three separate databases with their own recorded samples optimized for that language, be warned that a vocalist is likely to sound different in these kinds of voices. Hatsune Miku V4 English allows Miku to sing in English through brand new recordings by Fujita, but it's not guaranteed that her English is as high quality or easy to use as voice banks singing in native British or American English, or that she'll sing in the exact same tone as she does in Japanese or Chinese, which becomes especially noticeable if you're incorporating multiple languages into your music. Not only are the languages handled separately by the software, but the quality of a voice bank can also depend on the provider's experience in that language or the accent they use, which is why English voice banks by non-English voice providers like Miku V4 English are seen as particularly hard to use and should be purchased with caution when you're just starting out. <laughs> For 
For my personal recommendations on where to look for the latest and greatest in voice banks, the official Vocaloid website is of course all up to date, even if it doesn't have the full range. The Vocaloid 5 editor comes with four vocalists out of the box, Amy, Chris, Kaori, and Ken, two being male and female, two being English and Japanese. And while personally I don't find their voices appealing and I find them rather difficult to make satisfying results with, they're great for experimenting with different languages and vocal ranges for when you decide to buy add-on voice banks in future. And they look like Micro Machines rejects that too. If you have an interest in the character vocal series by Krypton Future Media, bundles for their latest builds can be purchased from SonicWire, recommended for newcomers who want some startup equipment to go with, as buying a Krypton Lloyd from SonicWire also gives you Peer Pro Studio, Krypton's very own editor that acts as an alternative to purchasing Vocaloid, and the Peer Pro edition of Studio One Artist, with a selection of virtual instruments to get straight into music production. Although I do recommend doing research on these two additional programs in your own time, to determine for yourself if they're an ideal alternative over any other vocal synth editor or DAW. Another recommendation of mine is Zero G if you want to get your hands on some cheap and simple English voice banks. Zero G's own voice banks consist of Dex and Dana for Vocaloid 4, Ivana for Vocaloid 3, and Prima, Tonio, and Sonica for Vocaloid 2, all of which range from $60 to $70 USD and go on sale rather frequently. A thing of note is that while voice banks for Vocaloid 3 and newer require you to purchase a compatible vocal synth editor separately, be it Vocaloid 5 or Peer Pro Studio, voice banks for Vocaloid 2 like Tonio, Prima, and Sonica come bundled with the Vocaloid 2 editor. It's of course not recommended as the software is rather outdated by comparison, but if you really want to use a Vocaloid 2 voice bank that hasn't yet received an upgrade, you can keep that in mind if you don't own a separate editor, or you can't get it transferred to a newer editor. Additional sellers of Vocaloid voice banks include Voctro Labs, Power Effects, and other third-party developers of Vocaloid voice banks. Some Vocaloid voice banks also provide trial versions that let you try the voice bank for a limited number of days. SonicWire has a range of trial versions for Miku Japanese and English, Luca, and Mako, and some voice banks like Mika and Mayu have trials available on their official websites. Do note though that trial restrictions vary depending on which version of Vocaloid the voice bank is for. If the voice bank is for Vocaloid 4, then you need the Vocaloid 4 editor or newer, and then you'll be able to use the voice bank as much as you like within the day limited trial. But if the voice bank is for Vocaloid 3, it will come bundled with a program called the Tiny Vocaloid 3 Editor. Unlike the voice bank trolls, this program does not expire after a certain amount of days, and is used for testing purposes for those who purchased V3 without their own editor sold separately, with a few functions stripped and limited to files up to 17 measures long. So one of the ultimate cheapskate methods of trying Vocaloid for absolutely free is a case of finding a free trial Vocaloid 3 voice bank and testing it out in the bundled Tiny Vocaloid 3 Editor for a couple of days. So after after this entire kerfuffle of version numbers and emptying out your entire debit card on fictional anime girls, you should hopefully have a vocal synth editor and a voice bank to start producing your wonderful work and or shitposting. But if most likely your jaw dropped to the floor after hearing this and you just want to cut the bullcrap and find out if vocal synths are right for you with minimal payment and fuss required, you can try other editors outside of Vocaloid. Utau is kind of the silver medal in vocal synths, a free Japanese shareware program that involves not purchasing officially made voice banks, but downloading custom made ones created by the community. Community. It's honestly really impressive software that adds another layer of creativity when everyone's bringing all these characters to life with samples they recorded from home, and I highly recommend looking into music produced with Utau voice banks like Kasune Taito, Maori Neshu, Ham, and Aido Ishiyame alongside Vocaloid. However, for absolute beginners, Utau is not a go-to from me personally, simply because last time I tried making a cover it was like laying a scared puppy loose into a stained glass factory. It isn't really friendly for beginners in the Amish for just quickly setting it up and giving it a try, though we can go deeper when it comes to a fussery editor, which is our lord and saviour, Synthesizer 5. Well, our buggy, underdeveloped lord and saviour, but hey, it works so it counts. Synth 5 is a super serious business, we did scientific research on this shit, voice synthesizer that released a matter of months ago by Kanru Hua and his team, and speaking from personal experience, gives you everything you need to have a try at vocal synths before breaking out the big guns. This being because, in of itself, it's a pretty big gun anyway that's easy to get into. And if you'd like to see where that personal experience has been getting me, you can see all my Synth 5 covers on my second channel, Guru Joe P. Thank you. For 79 USD, you get not just the software, but three of the four currently available voice banks are free to use at no additional cost. These four vocalists being female Japanese Aiko, male Japanese Genbu, female Japanese port of a new Tao voice bank Yamane Renri, and my new favourite voice bank to use, Queen of Queens female English Eleanor Fortnite. The software also has free trials for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS that lets you use Eleanor, Renri, and Genbu for as long as you like, though I do highly recommend purchasing the software when you start making your own works to reward the passionate hard work that went into this. And despite the occasional kink that needs to get ironed out 
over time, the software is simple, easy to use, and has its own unique functions that give it a leg up over Vocaloid, like universal voice parameters that change the pitch of a note in real time, and a parameter known as tension. We established before that in Vocaloid, a vocalist can have multiple voice banks called appends, wherein they sing in different tones, and in Vocaloid 4, Yamaha introduced the cross synthesis parameter that lets you blend two appends together to naturally transition them between the two, a function that has long since been removed in Vocaloid 5 in favour of vocal effects. Tension in Synthesizer 5 is basically a fully realised version of cross synth, where by drawing a line along your project you have control over if you want your vocalist to sing in a more powerful or gentle tone of voice, and helps a ton for making your vocals that little bit more expressive. Add on an official forum on the Synth 5 website, and the software's creator being very active on Twitter, and it's pretty much the perfect learning environment for absolute newcomers. So, you have your editor, and you have your voice bank, so it's just a matter of learning how to make sure your precious little anime robot doesn't sound flatter than Emma Stone. I'm partially kidding. Like, yeah, it's easy, drag out the notes, write some lyrics, hit play, but there's more to it as you get some bare minimum results from that method. Obviously, make sure you take a good look at the official resources you're given for more details. Vocaloid, like any other software, provides instructions to make sure you're not kept in the dark. And the official website and YouTube channel provide tutorials on the Vocaloid 5 editor and how to accomplish different vocal effects, which can honestly be really helpful helpful at times to explain its new features, at least when compared to the stuff they had for Vocaloid 4. So you do have plenty of resources in order to learn the basics of the software, and once again, community wikis and forums are your friends. But I'd like to provide a couple of tips to ease you into the more advanced elements that after a little bit of practice will make your vocals sound better. Tip 1. Know your phonemes. Yeah, we're starting off with the nerd stuff, I'm sorry. Phoneme is the magical term for individual units of sound, and in Vocaloid they're also the goofy little symbols the engine uses to differentiate different sounds. It's kind of like an ID system. Each and every phoneme is unique to reduce conflicts in the software. You may have noticed by now that when creating new notes with an English voice bank, it automatically places the lyric OO accompanied with a bizarre symbol, a lowercase u with a semicolon. This is the OO phoneme in English voice banks, or known linguistically as the close back rounded vowel, and is used by the software when deemed appropriate to the lyric you typed, such as when writing to, view, or bemused into a note. But this isn't all just down to the software, and if you feel the pronunciation isn't what you wanted it to be, you can dive into a note directly and change its phonemes. The most basic essential phoneme to start with is dash. The dash phoneme is important because not only can it be written as a lyric, but when used it extends the sound of a previous note into the new note, which is particularly useful if you want to stretch a one-syllable word into two or more notes. In Vocaloid 5, it's simply a matter of writing the word into the first note, and then adding dashes to however many additional notes you want to stretch that syllable too. In Vocaloid 4 or older, you just have to add a dash onto the end of the lyric in the first note, add a dash to additional notes in between that you want to stretch the vowels to, and then add a slash onto the last note to allocate the ending consonants. To directly modify the phonemes in a note, in Vocaloid 4 or older, you just go to the phoneme preferred display view under view, or right click a note and go into its note properties. In Vocaloid 5, you can change the lyric input view under job to phonetic symbol, or change the phonemes here in the corner of the attack release effects menu. The instruction manuals for every iteration of the Vocaloid editor come with phonetic tables for every language supported by the software, so you can look up the syllables you need for the voice bank, or you can head to the phonetic tables on the Vocaloid wiki, which provide more details about a phoneme and other phonemes that are similar to it. Not only is learning how to use phonemes in Vocaloid useful for fixing pronunciation issues, but it gives you way more control over syllables to allocate vowels and consonants to each note precisely, and it's also useful for implementing words that might not exist in the software. For instance, if I have an English voice bank singing begone thought, begone is a pretty simple word, but thought is slang and doesn't exist. By adding it to Vocaloid, it's just a matter of typing capital T, capital Q, and lowercase t into the phoneme region of a note, these phonemes being a voiceless dental fricative, an open back rounded vowel, and a voiceless alveolar plosive, as an example of how phoneme knowledge can help you. Be this is also why you're able to find Vocaloid songs in languages that a voice bank was not developed for, or even languages Vocaloid doesn't support in the first place, like Portuguese and Tagalog. It's a clever use of using phonemes for a language to mimic the sounds of another. You don't need to memorize every single one by heart, but knowing how phonemes work and how you can modify them does give you some more control over your vocals. Okay, tip two, pitch bends and parameters. As I said before, Vocaloid is very flexible in terms of what can be accomplished with singing styles and patterns, but the double-edged sword to this is the samples 
are given to you in their rawest state. So without a degree of editing, known in the community as tuning, your vocals can sound very flat and digitized without much musical information for the engine to go off when synthesizing your file. Through use of some clever methods in the note structure and understanding the parameters, you can add more expression to the vocals to make them sound more pleasant with your music, such as breathness, which makes the voice more airy and fuzzy, dynamics, which let you adjust the volume of the voice throughout, and arguably the most important, pitch bending, which is a common element of most virtual instruments. The human singing voice is a complex and inconsistent instrument, and that complexity can be expressed by learning to pitch bend, done with not just the pitch bend parameter, but also through linking multiple notes together with the dash phoneme, or applying vibrato at the end of held notes. A good way to start is by simply cutting the first eighth or sixteenth of a note, and then placing it just a few keys below the dash phoneme tail that follows it to give it a more dynamic sounding attack. Then once you have more of an understanding of how it works, a more advanced but detailed approach is to have a try at drawing a slight downwards curve in between two notes. This causes a release on the previous note and an attack on the following which can make the transition more impactful. On top of that, all versions of Vocaloid have built-in vibrato presets you can attach onto notes so they can fade out with a natural wavering on the pitch. I love you. I love you. Out of all the software versions, Vocaloid 4 and 5 are the easiest editors to work on pitch, as they're the only versions that have pitch rendering implemented, where a pitch line is shown on your file. Vocaloid 4's is still a little tricky to work with, however, as you still have to click the pitch render button every time you modify the file, so for instant pitch rendering, Vocaloid 5 is the way to go. Synth 5 is also good in terms of pitch rendering, as it's instantaneous the moment you modify the pitch line. Vocaloid 5 also offers pitch presets under the attack and release effects menu, which are not only great for applying some more advanced pitch bends to your vocal like Enka and Melisma, but helps with giving you more of an ear to pitch bending and understand how to make your vocals more expressive in future. Like for example how some advanced users don't use vibrato presets and instead manually draw it in using the pitch bend parameter. There is no right answer to tuning in Vocaloid, but through these tools and enough practice you can make the vocals that are right for you. Next up, tip 3, observation is key. A lot of different artists and hobbyists use Vocaloid in many different ways. Some use external software, some make insane pitch bends, some make files that look like actual hot messes but still sound good in the end, and some have the most basic sounding vocals but use the music to back it up in a pleasing way. So a good way to get some more ideas on how to use Vocaloid is just keep your eyes and ears open, even if you're not listening to Vocaloid music. Look up covers where the uploader shows their file in real time, even if the file isn't visible, just listening to the music with base knowledge of the software can help you pick up on small things like when they use vibrato or when they change to a different append. Like I said, even knowing a little about how Vocaloid works gives you a new layer to appreciate about Vocaloid music so you can just lose your shit over the tiniest of cool things you hear. Even just listening to human vocalists can help a ton as you begin to pick up on tiny little things like when they change their tone of voice or how their pitch transitions between two notes. Essentially, as you learn the software, you'll develop an ear for this kind of thing that helps when putting it into practice. If you really want to do some research, you can even download other users' publicly available files to open in your own editor and freely delve into how they accomplish a certain sound. Now, let's have a real talk for a sec. If you're a cover artist, when you find out you can use other people's files, no problem, there is a little tempting prospect in the back of your mind of just downloading someone else's file, swapping the voice bank to something else, and bada bing bada boom, you just got yourself a new cover. But I know you're better than that and you're willing to heavily edit or make your files from scratch so you can learn about the software and find your own style of tuning. <laughs> <sighs> Tip 4. A little does a lot. Judging by the header, you probably think I mean that in a self-care way, like using Vocaloid in birth sessions, going for a deep tissue massage, or shoving autumn leaves up your butt. And to be fair, that's pretty important, take care of yourself and whatnot, but I'm talking about small use of functions in the software. Vocaloid is all about versatility. Said that a million times. And due to there being no right answer to making good quality vocals, you'd be surprised just how many functions and parameters work well in both extreme and finite amounts, especially when trying to mimic the human singing voice. We've all been there. We learn something new when we're drawing, editing, or composing, and the next thing we know we want to use it with everything. But subtlety can go a long way, as the best quality work comes from elements that the end user isn't thinking about too much. For example, gender factor is a parameter that, as the name suggests, makes the voice higher and lower in pitch while still keeping the voice in tune, which results in a voice as squeaky as a chipmunk or deeper than my Twitter at 3am. So when using this parameter, your first thought is to set a higher or lower factor on the entire project to make the bass sample sound more characterized 
stylized and less like the base samples. But not only can you do that, but even just applying a small amount in a critical moment can go a long way. One example I like to give is when a vocalist belts out a really powerful chorus or a long note. Spiking the gender factor at the very beginning of the note, or prior lyrics so that it starts off deep before returning to the default pitch, can make the delivery sound more powerful and strenuous, a technique you can find with both vocal synth and human vocals. For me. Finding smaller techniques like these, for example one of my favourites where you give a note a softer release by lowering the dynamics near the end and turning up the breathness, can give your vocals a lot more depth that can make them more pleasant to listen to. So when you learn something new in the software, try to figure out as many possible uses it may have, because there's always more than one, and the right one is down to you. And lastly, tip 5. Embrace imperfections. This one's an important one as it's mostly just a self-control tip about being patient with the software and not beating yourself up when it doesn't go your way. Vocaloids typically advertised as a replacement for the human singing voice, so when jumping into the software for the first time, it can be daunting, because our initial thought is that you need to make the most realistic vocals possible so that nobody can tell you're using a vocal synth. But in actual fact, that's just one part of the medium. There are many Vocaloid users who absolutely excel at tuning vocals, and that's just one way of tuning and just one element of their music, it is their style. Once again, if you can make a really nice original song or you just have some translated lyrics you want to show to everyone, as long as it fits and you have the timing and notes right, nobody's concerned about pitch bends and phonemes, especially when considering artists like KZ and Sasakura UK capitalised on the digital nature of Vocaloid to make completely robotic and inhuman vocals, and it just works. And even if the project file doesn't sound like what you were expecting, just wait until you add some harmony or mix it in with your instrumental, and chances are it will sound sound fine in no time at all. Not to mention, this is the human singing voice we're talking about, and even when vocal synths are out of the picture, the human singing voice is pretty messed up. There's nothing really perfect about singing, sometimes we fluctuate in pitch, say a word weirdly or something that's just not possible for our voice, so if you run into an issue like a lyric sounding too abrupt or a transition being a little weird, have a try at singing the melody line yourself, and chances are that might just be how an actual human would process that. All in all, the most important tip I can give for creating with Vocaloid is be patient patient, be realistic, and have fun. So that's the gist of things, but here's some additional miscellaneous tips to keep in mind. Have a go with portamento timing. Portamento is a parameter that changes the timing of the pitch transition between two notes, and while using it too intensely can result in vocals sounding a bit out of time, it can make them more loose and expressive in exchange depending on the situation. Both Vocaloid 5 and Synthesizer 5 come with VST plugins, so you can sync and use them alongside a DAW like Studio One, Ableton, or FL Studio. The plugins can be found for these two editors under the following parts on PC. The following voice banks listed here are available on the official Vocaloid website, but only on the Japanese storefront, so if you can't find them, try switching the languages. Most Vocaloid products come with upgrade discounts for owners of previous iterations. For example, the standard edition of Vocaloid 5 comes from $225 to $135 if you own Vocaloid 3, 4, Vocaloid for Cubase, or any of their variations, so there is some future proofing if you worry a newer version might just be on the horizon. That being said, don't worry about immediately flocking to the shiniest and newest Vocaloid as soon as they come out. If you own a version 4 of a vocalist and a version 5 releases in the coming months, look into the new features and see if it's an upgrade you really need. And keep in mind when listening to demo songs that the song's quality is most likely down to the tuning of the artist, not necessarily the improvements to the voice bank. Since its launch, Vocaloid 5 has gradually added free downloadable phrase packs that add more preset and pre-tuned phrases to the editor. If your music primarily uses samples and phrases rather than full vocals, check the new contents menu under the help tab to install these new packs. And while we're at it, don't be afraid to take a look at the new library function in Vocaloid 5. It's useful for learning pitch bends, a post-launch patch for the software allows the phrases to be used by any voice bank without affecting the tuning, and it can even act as decent brain food when repurposing phrases for a melody line. If 
you want to study a bit more into different singing styles of more high profile tracks, there's a YouTube channel called 3 Low 1 High Gaming who has a playlist of tracks from the Project Diva series with just the vocals and the instrumentals removed. Looking at the videos on this channel is perfect for having more of an idea of how these well known Japanese artists not only tune but also master and edit their vocals, link in the description. And following that, this is more of a tip for absolute beginners, don't worry if you're an artist or anything, don't forget that charting out the vocals in Vocaloid itself is just the start. To improve with using Vocaloid, learn how to mix effectively using a DAW or the built-in mixing features in the Vocaloid editor itself. In most cases, slapping the vocal track on top of an instrumental and lowering the instrumental's volume ain't gonna cut it. So if it doesn't sound right, even if you did your best in Vocaloid, look up some tutorials or experiment with some audio effects. And with that, congrats! You graduated to the occupation I like to call, I now know how to keep waifus inside my computer because I check Google for more than five minutes. And with that, We've reached the end of the video. I hope your ears are still functioning after all that information I sent your way. God knows how my throat's still functioning. I really need some water one sec. <coughs> Uh, breathing is hard. <laughs> so, there we have it. After watching this video, you should have all the information you need, and then some, to know how to get into Vocaloid. And I hope you stick around to see where this medium goes in the coming years. Even if the very next day, the team behind the framework just decide to stop developing further on the software, the community and legacy Vocaloid has left behind is something to behold. It's not just a silly plugin where a computer sings for you, it's a whole ecosystem that embraces creativity from everyone involved. So even if this video gets just one person to tag along, it'll be the the best feeling in the world. So, whoever you are, if you're a composer, writer, animator, illustrator, music enthusiast, or just some idiot with a microphone and editing software, get out there. See what Vocaloid has to offer and see what you can offer it in return. Because if 10 years of love and support can lead to a teary-eyed way of thanks from a fictional character, then we can expect something much, much bigger in future. Thank you.